Hi everybody, Kai Waza with you. I hope you're having a good week. And uh, I kind of ran over on my last video and I thought I was going to do my Hawaiian boxed sets, but I didn't have time. Or I didn't want to make the video too long. So uh, I decided that I would just do this separate video on my Hawaiian box sets and then we will start on the letter D. So let's, let's check out the box sets. <clears throat> So I was going to do uh, my Hawaiian box sets in the last video, but I kind of talked too long about the other stuff. <laughs> so I decided let's just make it a separate video and I'll go ahead and do it now since I was ready to do it. Um, <clears throat> and we'll start on the letter D next time. So quickly, we'll just go through the box sets. And I'm showing you the, the major label ones. I'm not going to show you. I do have a couple that are really budget label records and I will just show those when I do the the budget labels all together. So these are my Hawaiian box sets. This one comes from, first we'll look at the Long Jean Symphonette ones. I have two, Long Jean Symphonette Society out of New York. Uh, now in terms of collector's values, any of you who follow these kind of things, you know these box sets are really derided, not just the Hawaiian ones, all of them, the easy listening and classical and everything, always derided as having no collector's value. Uh, at all and the only reason you should you know really have them supposedly is just if you like the music so that's fine uh, and I will say that most of these these box sets to me have tremendous sentimental value because most of them I had when I was younger or my grandfather had and so I have really a lot of sentimental attachment to these box sets um, this one from the Longine Symphonette Hawaii Melodies from Paradise don't you love that picture I mean it's so dreamy and flowery and everything. There's not a year on this one, but I do think this was the first. So we'll just take a look inside of them. This is, you know, supposedly really two groups on here. Tradewind Minstrels, who were vocalists, and Aloha Lears. Aloha Lears, who were the instrumental ensemble. But it's, it's all, you know, an orchestra, whatever. Contents, five records, this one different picture there and I love these things because if you can get the original ones you know they come with all the accoutrement and papers like here's the paper advertising it and encouraging you to get you know other of the things that they they offer you here's the card that you can because you're gonna love this one so much that you can order it for someone else the order form uh, it also comes with this handy, lovely little booklet. Love that picture. Uh, this one doesn't really describe the songs, but it's just like a little Hawaiian history and some pictures and a little bit about the music and whatnot. Menu for a luau. Most of these, like this one, this is not the original set that I owned. I've replaced them because um, I did play them an awful lot. Now, my grandfather had this one, or this set, as a kid, and that was my exposure to it. Uh, and if you are interested in, uh, if you know Leo Adeo, I think that's how you pronounce it, and also another group called the Diamond Head Beachcombers did an album called uh, Aloha from Hawaii. And they have exactly the same arrangements as what's on it. It's not exactly the same recording, but exactly the same arrangements of all the songs that are on here um, that are on those albums are the same arrangements. So I guess, you know, whatever. I don't really know the story behind that. Also, uh, if you ordered it, you would get this this extra album, which you could keep even if you wanted to return the album and I, the set. And I think, um, I don't know, but the, maybe they also sent these out to people that ordered some other set and then they would maybe send you this along and say hey get this hawaiian one because there's more music and i do have that the accompanying album aloha moods and uh it does have you know songs that were not in the album set um, but uh, are the same musicians same sessions or whatever so i guess they i don't know whether they just you know re recorded six albums worth of music and decided what was going to go on the set and what was going to be the bonus album i don't know anyway but that is hawaii melodies from paradise uh, with the accompanying album and then the other one uh that i have from long jean symphonette um i think i may actually have gotten this before my grandfather did 
uh, he lived in the same neighborhood, and we were both into Hawaiian music and would get records. And this one I got, uh, I don't know if any of you ever dealt with, like, in the 70s. It's not published as Central Clearinghouse, because that's who gives away. I mean, we all know that. But it was a ripoff of that, like the name. It was something similar. Publisher Central Bureau, I think it was called. And they would send out flyers and magazines to you that had... Uh, they had like overstock of records and overstock of books and so they would sell things really cheap and they would often have Hawaiian records and things like this. Um, and I eagerly, eagerly, as a like junior high and high school kid, anticipated their, their mailings which would come out maybe two, three times a year or more. And this one I got through them. Uh, Hawaiian brass from the Longines Symphonette. This cover, I love it, right? The brass around in the water. And the outfit's very 70s, right? This print, it's very 1970s. And in fact, it is 1973, I think the date on this one is. Um, let me check here. 1973, yeah. You know, the quality of the pressings on these, like, sets, Longines Symphonette sets, is really good. Um, this one's six records, woo! And very, uh, some of these all brass arrangements, uh, rather than string. And kind of funny, I mean, some of them, I don't know, there's a lot of, like, tooting and do 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 kind of almost Japanese-sounding things they do there. I, I loved this set as a kid and just played it so much. Played the thing to death. I mean, this is a replacement. This is not the original one that I had because I just totally played it to death. Native Rhythms with a Bold New Beat. Yeah, and it also had an accompanying album, accompanying record, promotional, whatever same instrumentalist, same lady on the cover there, Enchanted Island, the now sounds of Hawaii. And this one, uh, promoting that album, there's the traditional Longines Symphonette back, is actually, uh, none of these were Hawaiian songs on this promotional one, but they were all in that Hawaiian brass group arrangement. But uh, Song Sun Blue, You're So Vain, I believe in music, alone again, naturally, leaving on a jet plane, I like that one. So that's Hawaiian Brass, love that, very sentimentally attached to that one. Then I have three that are from the Reader's Digest, they did quite a few. And in order of their release, first one, South Sea Island Magic, Reader's Digest, and this one was 1968. Uh, of all of them, I'm probably the least fond of this one. Um, and I'm not exactly sure why. I think because uh, the, the, the small... Now, these albums feature different artists. And their house band or their small Hawaiian combo was called the Kalua Beach Boys. And on this one, I don't particularly like the arrangements by the Kalua Beach Boys. They have an accordion. It's a much... Not much reverb, it's a much smaller sounding group. I don't really like it as much as the other albums. Uh, the orchestras are beautiful on here, though. And there's a couple of vocalists, Lois Nunley, Lewis Nunley and Rosemary Squires, who are sort of like Doris Day and kind of like Frank Sinatra imitators or something. Uh, what I love about these sets, um, particularly with uh, Reader's Digest, is you get lots of liner notes you get information about every song some background about like who wrote it or what the story behind the song is um a little history of it so very informative very informative actually these readers digest sets so uh yeah but of the four or of the three i should say four of the four this one is to me the least interesting and this one is the most. Uh, probably because I'm the most sentimentally attached to it. I had it when I was a little kid and uh, played it to death. And my grandfather had it also. Hawaiian Paradise, Delightful Music of the Islands. Same group, Kalua Beach Boys and other orchestras and chorus. But I love this one because the steel guitar has so much reverb on it. It sounds like, you know, Bali High in the distance. And I just, I love this set and I played it to death. 
uh, five records and again lots and lots of liner notes and information about each song which is terrific very sort of tiki-ish artwork there love it um, I'm getting really long here, so let me wrap this thing up. 1978, Aloha Hawaii. Uh, look, I like this one, too, quite a bit. Um, six records. This one, I, what's notable about this one is it has, in addition to Kalua Beach Boys, a Sense of Paradise was like uh, Oregon, but it also has Al Viola and, or Al Kaiola. Al Kaiola and his orchestra. Um doing 12 of the songs and they are magnificent arrangements so exotic like with bird calls and very very lush and very very beautiful if you don't have it i think it's worth getting just for those 12 al kaiola uh, arrangements on here really fantastic and then the last one uh that i have is from 1985 Reader's Digest Pleasure Programmed, it says here. Memories of Hawaii and All Star Salute. This one for me, I got kind of as an afterthought because it is, uh, I, I have almost all this music. This one is a little different in that it's uh, seven records, but it's all like a half site each of selections from other albums that have already been previously released. So there's like Bing Crosby and uh, other orchestras there's some martin denny wayne king has a whole side you know and it's mostly uh, stuff that i already have on other albums so uh, i just kind of got it to have it because i got it cheaply somewhere otherwise i pretty much have all this material already but again it's good to get um for the information about the song so much information about each song and the history the writer of it in some cases the artist um, really great information on these so that is memories of Hawaii and all star salute and uh, other than the budget label ones which I'll include in budget labels those are my Hawaiian box sets and I think there's only one other one that I've seen I can't remember who it's put out by uh, but I know also it was all things that I had already and I hadn't got it because I've never seen it cheaply If I saw it cheaply, I would get it um, But otherwise there's no need so that's my box set <laughs>
yeah, I don't know. I hope you enjoyed that. It's I, the box sets, you know, to me, like I said, because I had most of them since I was a little kid, and my grandfather also had them, and I would go to his house and listen to them. So they have such like sentimental attachment for me. I can't really separate. I think you know whether the music is just great or whether I just have such great memories associated with them. So, but anyway, those are uh, my Hawaiian box sets. Next time we start on the letter D.